Looks like we got another reward. I didn't realize that so many still remained. Danon Owls truly are majestic indeed. I thought the Danon Owls had all but died out myself. That's what I get for making assumptions. Just so we're clear, this place is supposed to be a secret. Yes, I'm aware. Places like these should be kept out of the public eye. It's a pity, though. With proper training, they could be made into a magnificent chorus. <laughs> what are they hooting about now? Alvin and Xion can interpret for us, right? Huh? Oh, no, I mean, it was just a lucky guess last time. Yeah? Maybe you'll be lucky twice. Go on, give it a shot. Uh, really? Well, if you say so. <clears throat> Let's see. Listen to them. Are they really up to the task? <sighs> what do you mean? You're the one who put them in charge. <laughs> It's my responsibility to protect our friends. Stop trying to take everything upon yourself. This is what the owls are saying? Of, of course. course. Uh... I must say, though, we've found quite a number of owls. It's a testament to how much you care for Hoodle, Rinwell. Hmm... I wonder which branch Hoodle will perch on. Rinwell? Oh, nothing. Don't mind me. Well, come on. The perches are only half filled. We've got to find the rest of the owls. This place definitely isn't easy to navigate. That's for sure. I doubt this structure was conceived with the ease of people's movement in mind. Yeah. We've been seeing nothing but zoogle nests. It's almost as if we're inside an incredibly immense spirit vessel of some sort. A spirit vessel? If that's the case, then that would make Lenigus the master core that's receiving all the astral energy. Hey, have you heard that voice again since we came in here? Oh, so now you believe me. I never said I didn't believe you. <sighs> the further in we go, the stronger the voice gets. Is that a sign we're going the right way, then? Where's this voice coming from? Can you tell? Yeah, kind of. I hear it inside me, but I feel like it's also coming from every direction around us. It's hard to describe. It's almost like it's surrounding me. Surrounding, huh? Considering astral energy is involved, it's not that unusual. Right, but it's not scary or anything. Listening to it is really soothing. If you think so, just promise you'll say something if the voice gets too... clingy or anything. I promise. Wow, that's some weird-looking meat you're cooking up there. What is it, exactly? That would be grilled rapig. What?! Whoa there! What's the big brouhaha?! It's Rapig! How could you cook something with such cute little eyes? What did it ever do to you? I fail to see what the problem is. Rapigs are perfectly edible creatures. <laughs> Having said that, I do realize it's become rather rare to eat them lately. What with people increasingly embracing them as pets and companions. They definitely didn't fall out of fashion to eat because of their flavor, that's for sure. Agreed. Rapigs have tender, fatty meat. The taste can take some getting used to, but I would argue that's part of its charm. If the taste is too strong, I imagine you can either just cook it thoroughly or simmer it with some herbs to mask it. Indeed. At first I wasn't sure whether to smoke it with spices or simmer it in water, but I opted to grill it as is instead. Seriously, Dohalim? You have the weirdest tastes! That's probably because when you live the life of a lord, you grow tired of most ordinary cuisine. So you end up seeking out more unusual food. I don't know if that's good or bad. 
Well, putting aside what it used to be, you've got to admit it does look pretty damn good. Meat is meat, after all. That reminds me. I do believe I once read in a book about rare delicacies how one can go about preparing an owl. Huh? I suppose I won't have the chance to try it anytime soon. No, with Hoodle, you won't! <laughs> After mastering countless recipes and gathering enough ingredients to last a lifetime, I finally cooked my greatest, grandest masterpiece! Mabo Curry! This is a specially made, one-of-a-kind batch. It contains only the best combination of spices, chosen after a lot of trial and error. Your... Spices... Uh, I think I'll have some later after everyone else. I'm not that hungry right now. You sure? It does smell pretty tasty now that you mention it. The heat from the spices is intense, but not persistent, so it's easy to go back for seconds. You're making a good case for your curry, Alfin. What the hell? Serve me up! Um, mmm. Oh, wow. This is actually good. Mmm. To be honest, I'm a little scared how my stomach will handle all these spices later. But they really do bring out the flavor. Indeed. The spiciness has been so finely tuned. Why, I dare say you've made true art, Alfin. Right? I knew you guys would like it. Like it? I love it! This is delicious, man! Law, really? Don't talk with your mouth full. There's plenty for everyone, so eat as much as you like. Another fine day for journeying, huh? Tell me, do you ever find yourself tiring of the Vagabond existence? It's better than being enslaved, that's for sure. I get to pick my own destination, for starters. You don't get those luxuries as a slave. Shackle a man's feet, and you put a clamp on his heart as well. Then there was the food. Gross slop that left you in a permanent state of hunger. Ugh, you wouldn't believe the things I ate to keep from starving. What about you? This must all sound pretty alien to someone who used to be a lord. Is that a hint of interest in my past I detect? I guess that's one way to put it. Well, certainly starvation was never a concern I had to contend with. The day-to-day -day grind was largely taken care of for me. I even had help getting in and out of clothes. All that was required of me was standing still while looking solemn. That's quite the downgrade you've made. It's a wonder you don't sound more bitter. This might surprise you, but I actually don't find our current situation all that disagreeable. My own hardships paled in comparison to yours, granted. But life as a lord came laden with its own restrictions. Forgive me. Such complaints must sound like feeble extravagances to a Danon. True, Ren and Opulence doesn't feature high on my sympathy list. And again, yours isn't exactly a normal case. I suppose it's not. Sometimes, I can't help but wonder how much easier life would have been without the trappings of nobility. You really mean that? Pay me no heed. Not but the ramblings of a privileged eccentric. Whatever my past, it has led to my being here. That is all the reality I need concern myself with. You've collected an awful lot of those objects. You sure it's not just ju- Hush, be quiet for a moment. The pieces speak to me. What? These relics that have scattered about, I can hear them whispering, longing to reunite with their lost friends and become one again. Really? Do you hear any voices coming from them, Rinwell? What? No! Don't get me wrong, I'm really interested in these things too, but I'm not crazy. But don't you sometimes mutter stuff like, Come to me, astral energy, when you cast your arts? <sighs> you... you're right. Oh my gosh. Are Dohalim and I actually alike? Its charm really shines through now that it's been reassembled. Its streamlined shape, its geometric patterns. This is no mere amateur's work. He's in his own little world at this point. You get just like him when it comes to weapons, you know. You're right. 
Oh my gosh, am I just like Dohalim? Huh? Why are you guys so quiet all of a sudden? Uh, all right, something is definitely up with Xion. Yeah, something big by the looks of it. I've never seen her so serious. So, do you think we should say something to Alfin then? I was wondering the same thing myself, but then it occurred to me. Hmm? Whatever this thing on her mind is, it's probably the last thing in the world she wants people to know about. <sighs> if she's trying this hard to keep it secret, then it's not really our place to go telling people before she's ready. Yeah. I can't tell them. There's... There's just no way I could, right? I... What am I supposed to do? Everyone around here looks so much happier than they used to. I'll say. It feels like an entirely different place. I suppose it's had time to adjust to its newfound freedom. Zephyr would have been so happy to see this. Yeah, he really would have. Especially if he knew Law was... Law? <laughs> Something bothering you, Law? Nah, I... I'll be fine. It's just... you know... <laughs> it still weighs on you, doesn't it? Running away back then. I abandoned my home. Then when I finally come back, it's been liberated. What's important is that it's free. I get that, I do. I just... I should have been here. Everything okay with Hoodle, Rinwell? He seems kind of out of spirits. It must be the heat getting to him. We don't get these kind of temperatures back in Cislodia. Galaglians born and raised here struggle with it too, so it's no surprise. Aha! So that's why his plumage is so white. He was born in a winter wonderland. Actually, Dan and Owls absorb the astral energy of whatever land they're raised in. Where they're born doesn't affect their appearance at all. But that's not why he's white. The real reason is that he's still just a baby. Whoo! You mean their plumage changes color depending on where they grow up? Weird. And with all this traveling we've been doing, it wouldn't surprise me if his wings ended up looking like a colorful painting. I think he suits his snowy complexion. It'll feel strange to see him change. How awesome would it be if his head and wings were different colors? And his stomach and sides, like a map of our travels! <laughs> Ow, lay off, will ya? So much for the heat making him docile! You've only yourself to blame for that one. Hoodle takes pride in his appearance, you know. Fascinating. An appreciation of aesthetic beauty in an owlet so young. <laughs> Dohalim. I think you've drawn his attention. What do you know? Another big fire monster with nothing better to do than get in our way! I wonder where the rest of those lights ended up landing. It looked like they were pretty scattered. Well, whatever they're after, let's just hope none of them are anywhere near a city. An ambush on civilians is the last thing we need. Well, no rest for the wicked, right? Though, with one down and three to go, it sounds like our headache is just beginning. I thought you liked the opportunity to flex your muscles. Against those things? It's not like I have a death wish. Besides, we've already got our hands full saving the world. Dying stupidly won't be much help to the cause. Yeah, I guess I can't argue with that logic. Sorry. The end of the world. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I believe Xion is telling the truth. What about you? As a friend, yes. I want to believe her. Everything that's happened seems to point towards some sort of great danger that's lurking ahead of us. Still, it's hard to fathom something that could usher outright doom to the world. That those really are the stakes we face. No, I understand. Even Xion doesn't seem to know exactly what will happen to bring it all about. We have so many pieces of the puzzle in our hands, so many clues, yet the complete picture eludes us. 
So where do her thorns fit in, then? Well, I imagine they must sit at the very center of it all. You remember the voice we all heard while we were inside the wedge, don't you? Yeah, I remember. It was the will of Dana's astral energy come to life. Well, that's what we all thought. Right. And from that, we're able to hypothesize how vast concentrations of astral energy can become sentient. Let's return to when we found Xion in Pelegion. When her thorns went wild, they contained far more astral energy than any mere Renin would normally have inside them. So you think those thorns might be alive too? That their will is what keeps her from dying? But why would they want to destroy the entire world? As for that, I really cannot say for certain. Its goals still remain a mystery. It may be a mere fluke that her maiden powers have been able to contain it thus far. You know, I've noticed since we've met that you like figuring out riddles. Can you blame me? When one realizes that the world they once thought to be true is but a mere facade, they can't help but seek the truth. Especially when that deception has led to others getting hurt. Dohalim? I imagine the remaining pieces of the puzzle that we seek rest somewhere within Lenigus. As for what the final picture will look like, who can say? I think it's best we not dwell on it too much for the time being. Right. How are you holding up? Who, me? Yes, you. You took a hit from those thorns again, didn't you? Oh, that? That was nothing. Compared to what Xion's going through, you mean? Still, even if you yourself might be willing to endure that kind of pain, that doesn't mean Xion wants to have to see you get hurt by her thorns, you know? <sighs> yeah, I know. I'll be careful. Xion doesn't know how lucky she is to have you around, you know? Dashing in to save her at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, very funny. I'm being serious. You went up and held her close like you still had that mask on, and you didn't even bat an eye. She really needed that. That's what I mean when I said you saved her. Just like you did with the rest of us. I just want for Xion what we all have. The ability to touch someone without the fear of killing them. Those thorns have robbed her of the kind of everyday things we all take for granted. And it's not right. You can say that again. It may be normal for us, but that doesn't make it any less special or important for her. I hope she gets what she wants. I have my own dreams, but a world without her, where she dies so we can all survive, isn't a world I want to live in. Agreed. It's like more and more keeps getting taken from her, and I'm done with it. Did you know? You mean about Xion? Yeah, I didn't have the slightest idea. I mean, every once in a while I thought something seemed a little off, but I never could have imagined. It's like a completely different world was spinning around me and I couldn't even see it. You and me both. I mean, I knew something was bothering her, but I could never quite figure out what it was. You? But you're the one always looking out for her, aren't you? That's what I thought. But in reality, I didn't understand it all. What I thought was helping and being there for her was actually just driving her into a corner. At least you figured it out in time, though, right? I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But yeah, you're right. We brought her back from the edge, and we're going to stop those thorns from taking her. No matter what. Yeah, with all of us together, there's nothing we can't handle. Xion, the world, we can save everyone. And I mean it when I say we, Alfin. I know. No lone wolfing it. Hey... You're the expert on what my dad would say. Do you think he'd pat me on the back or tell me off? Zephyr, I don't think that he'd have that much to say, to be honest. You're your own man now, Law. And you've already made up your own mind about what you want. I guess he couldn't say anything even if he wanted to. Law. Sorry. I guess those of us amongst the living have enough problems to deal with, don't we? We'll need all our strength to save Xion. I'll probably end up worrying again at some point, but I guess I'll think it over more then. That okay? 
Yeah, I think it is. Can't sleep? After everything we just heard? How could I? Fair enough. Xi'an's had to deal with so much on her own. Even when we were all laughing and celebrating, she just kept quiet and didn't say anything. I thought she was keeping her distance because of her thorns. That it was because she didn't want to hurt anybody by getting too close. I just figured that that was the type of person she was, you know? But it turned out to be none of that. All this time, she felt like she had to die and sacrifice herself for the greater good. But even then, she didn't think she could say anything to us about it. I know. She was so alone this entire time. How could I call her a friend and yet be so completely blind to everything she was going through? I'm sure it made her happy, knowing you were there for her. You really think so? Yeah, I do. If she didn't think of us as friends, I don't think she could have ever opened up to us like that. You were a good friend to her before, and you'll be an even better one now. Yeah, I really hope so. I want to be the best I can for her. When you think about it, we were all alone in our own way. But over time, we've all found ways to let each other into our lives. I hope Xi'an's able to do that one day too. No, I mean, I hope she's able to do that more. Lots and lots more. I think it'd be really nice if we could all just be there to support each other when it really counts. And forget about our grudges and pain. Rinwell. Well, most of the perches are filled up now. Frankly, I'm amazed there's so many of these guys. What cautious lives they must have lived. They deserve credit for their vitality. They're all so lovely individually, but I think they look downright awe-inspiring when so many of them are gathered together in one place. I don't know. It's hard to relax with all of them eyeballing us at once. Yeah, I guess owls do seem to stare. <laughs> uh, you've done well. He's at it again. Come on, you know you like it. Frankly, I never thought you'd gather so many of us. You are so quick to rescue those in need. You have given us a big, happy family. We are on the brink of extinction. We must work together if we are to change our fate. You carry a heavy burden. Don't you worry. We can change fate. You won't be alone. I promise. This isn't just your fight. I'm here for you too. I want us both to be together. That was you interpreting for the owls, right? Yeah, of course. It's nice to see everyone getting along, but perhaps we should be moving on. Just who was that conversation between? Try not to think about it too much. Besides, there's still a few empty perches left. We've come this far. Why stop now, right? Hey, Hoodle. Once we've managed to gather all the owls, after that... Huh? All right, it's done. Apologies for the wait, you guys. That's a lot of fish you've cut up again, Kisara. That's because I caught so many earlier. If you're going to eat them, it's best to do it while they're still fresh. Was it difficult slicing up that many fish? No, I'm used to it. It's no big deal for me at this point. I know I probably shouldn't be saying this after all the trouble you went through, but I've never really understood the appeal of sashimi. Oh, I'm sorry, Law. I didn't realize. I only make it because it's an easy way to deal with big catches when I fish. You haven't done anything wrong, Kisara. Law, if you don't like the flavor, you're always welcome to add some of my spices to it. Hey, yeah, that might work. I'll just put some of this here. <laughs> What's wrong, Law? I've never seen someone jump up and sprint off that fast. He ran as soon as he took a bite of that sashimi. 
Hmm. Was he crying because of the taste? I don't think the sashimi is the problem here, guys. Rinwell, mind if we chat a little? <sighs> What's wrong? You're looking pretty down. Hmm. Something on your mind? Yeah, you could say that. It's just, well, there's something that's been eating away at me for a long, long time. Do you mind if I share it with you? Of course not. I'm glad to listen. See, my mom and dad used to tell me I shouldn't go around casting magic. But there was one time I did, behind their backs. And when I did, Almadria showed up. Huh? I... I hated Almadria for destroying everything I loved. But what I hated most was myself. For breaking my promise to my parents. <laughs> Even though I swore I'd get revenge, there was always this nagging part of me that wondered if I even had any right to do so. Rinwell, it was Almadria who killed your family. Don't torment yourself over one mistake. How can you say that when my mother and father died because of me? This may not comfort you much, but I'll say it anyway. I have a feeling your parents always knew something like that might happen. What do you mean? There was always a chance that someday, someone was going to find you and your family. But even knowing the risks, they still taught you magic. And there are two reasons I can think of for that. First, your talent. Second, they were hedging their bets. Huh? On what? On you, Rinwell, and how you turn out when you grew up. Sure, learning magic may invite danger, but it would have been even more dangerous to live in hiding without being able to defend yourself. They knew what they were getting themselves into when they taught you magic. And I think they did it because of how much they loved you. Because... Because my mother and father loved me. Sorry, I know I shouldn't be putting words into your parents' mouths. No, it's okay. I used to think I would have been better off if I never knew how to use magic. And if I'm really honest with myself, sometimes I still think that. But after traveling around with all of you guys, I've learned that there are things I can do with magic. That there's a point to it after all. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm gonna try and accept it as part of who I am. I want to use it to protect my friends. To protect the future of Dana. Do... Do you think that's selfish of me? Not at all. I wouldn't want it any other way with you, Rinwell. <laughs>